and I talk about problems a lot. I like to talk about solutions as well, but one of the things that people come back with when they don't want to listen to what I'm saying is they're like, who, who's behind it? Who is it? And it's like, they are. Like, who is they? You guys ever get that? Who is they? Prove it. That kind of thing, right? So I wrote a poem called They to address that question. They, they, they. I don't like they. They are ruthless. They are heartless. They don't care about our health. They are greedy. They are seedy. They rob us of our wealth. They deceive us. They mistreat us. They numb us with TV. They mislead us. They disease us. They say obedience is key. They put poison in the water. They put poison in the air. They put poison in the food supply. Then they tell us that they care. They engage in endless war. They send our sons away to die. They send our daughters away as well now under equality's disguise. They peddle pills to millions. They push debts into the trillions. They scare us, they impair us while they carpet bomb civilians. They teach us life is meaningless. They tell us all is random. They say have faith in scientists and authority in tandem. They are ubiquitous. They are omnipresent. They control the past from perches present. They plot and plan and scheme in secret. Exploitation, their great achievement. The puppeteering invisible all seers. The profiteering racketeers of fear. The cult of death to which mankind adheres. They are behind it. But who is they? Satanists, Zionists, globalists, socialists, people who script the news, Freemasons, Disney, Jesuits, the Vatican, NASA, Netflix, the Jews, bankers, aliens, the Clintons, the Queen, the Rothschilds, Henry Kissinger, Crown Council of 13. It doesn't really matter because the solution to they is we. Us and you and me. They are pathological. They are pitiful. They are diabolical. They are miserable. They are wicked beings living wickedly. And their punishment is their wickedness. The one thing they fear is 300 million people coming together on one topic and saying, this makes no sense. We need answers. An illusion will be created so vast, so large, that it escapes their perception. Those who see it will be thought of as insane. We will always stand above the relative field of their experience, for we know the secrets of the Absolute. We will work together always, and we will remain bound by blood and secrecy. Death will come to he who speaks. We will keep their lifespans short and their minds weak while pretending to do the opposite. We will use our knowledge of science and technology in subtle ways so they will never see what is happening. We will use soft metals, aging accelerators and sedatives in food and water, also in the air. They will be blanketed by poisons everywhere they turn. The soft metals will cause them to lose their minds. We will promise to find a cure from our many fronts, yet we will feed them more poison. The poisons will be absorbed through their skin and mouths. They will destroy their minds and reproductive systems. For all this, their children will be born dead, and we will conceal this information. They will see our products being used in films, and will grow accustomed to them, and will never know their true effect. When they give birth, we will inject poisons into the blood of their children and convince them that it's for their health. We will start early on, when their minds are young. We will target their children with what children love most, sweet things. When their teeth decay, we will fill them with metals that will kill their minds and steal their future. 
When their ability to learn has been affected, we will create medicines that will make them sicker and cause other diseases for which we will create yet more medicine. We will render them docile and weak, so they succumb to us and our power. They will grow depressed, slow and obese. And when they come to us for help, we will give them more poison. We will focus their attention towards money and material goods, so that they may never connect with their inner self. We will distract them with fornication, external pleasures and games, so that they may never be one with the oneness of all. Their minds will belong to us, and they will do as we say. If they refuse, we shall find ways to implement mind-altering technology into their lives. We will use fear as our weapon. We will establish their governments and establish opposites within. We will own both sides. We will always hide our objective, but carry out our plan. They will perform the labor for us and we shall prosper from their toil. Our families will never mix with theirs. Our blood must be pure, always, for it is the way. We will keep them separated from the oneness by dogma and religion. We will control all aspects of their lives. We will make them kill each other when it suits us and tell them what to think and how. We will guide them kindly and gently, letting them think they are guiding themselves. We will incite animosity between them through our factions. When a light shall shine among them, we shall extinguish it by ridicule or death, whichever suits us best. We will make them rip each other's hearts out and kill their own children. We will accomplish this by using hate as our ally, anger as our friend. Hate will blind them totally, and never shall they see that from their conflicts we emerge as their rulers. They will be busy killing each other. They will bathe in their own blood and kill their neighbors for as long as we see fit. We will benefit greatly from this, for they will not see us, for they cannot see us. We will continue to prosper from their wars and their deaths. We shall repeat this over and over until our ultimate goal is accomplished. We will continue to make them live in fear and anger through images and sounds. We will use all the tools we have to accomplish this. The tools will be provided by their labor. We will make them hate themselves and their neighbors. This they must never know. We will always hide the divine truth from them, that we are all one. They must never know that color is an illusion. They must always think that they are not equal. Drop by drop, drop by drop, we will advance our goal. We will take over their land, resources and wealth to exercise total control over them. We will trick them into accepting laws that will steal the little freedom that they have. We will establish a money system that will imprison them forever, keeping them and their children in debt. When they shall band together, we shall accuse them of crimes and present a different story to the world. For we will own all the media. We will use our media to control the flow of information and their sentiment in our favor. When they shall rise up against us, we will crush them like insects, for they are less than that. They will be helpless to do anything, for they will have no weapon. They must never learn this truth, for they will turn against us. For their work, they will be rewarded with earthly things and great titles. But never will they become immortal and join us. Never will they receive the light and travel the stars. They will never reach the higher realms, for the killing of their own kind will prevent passage to the realm of enlightenment. This they will never know. The truth will be hidden in their face. It will be so close that they will not be able to focus on it until it's too late. Oh yes, so grand will the illusion of freedom be that they will never know that they are our slaves. When all is in place, the reality that we have created from them will own them. This reality will be their prison. They will live in self-delusion. When our goal is accomplished, a new era of domination will begin. Their minds will be bound by their beliefs, the beliefs we have established from time immemorial. But if ever they find out that they are equal, we shall perish. This they must never know. If they ever find out that together they can conquer us, they will take action. They must never ever find out what we have done, for if they do, we shall have no place to run, for it will be easy to see who we are once the veil has fallen. Our actions will have revealed who we are, and they will hunt us down, and no person shall give us shelter. I mean, we just got here, and we have more than enough food to get us through the winter, right? Why go back? But there was that ant that stood up to me. Yeah, but we can forget about him. Yeah, it was just one ant. Ooh. <laughs> one ant. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's just one ant. Yeah, boss. They're puny. Hmm, puny? Say, let's pretend this grain is a puny little ant. Did that hurt? <laughs> nope. Well, how about this one? Are you kidding? <laughs> 
Well, how about this? You let one ant stand up to us, then they all might stand up. Those puny little ants outnumber us a hundred to one. And if they ever figure that out, there goes our way of life. It's not about food. It's about keeping those ants in line. All you ants, ideas are very dangerous things. You are mindless, soil-shoving losers. Put on this earth to serve us. You're wrong, Hopper. Ants are not meant to serve grasshoppers. I've seen these ants do great things. And year after year, they somehow manage to pick food for themselves and you. So, so who is the weaker species? Don't serve grasshoppers. It's you who need us. We're a lot stronger than you say we are. And you know it, don't you? <laughs> well, princess. Um, Hopper? Um, I, I hate to interrupt, but, uh... You ants, stay back! Oh, this was such a bad idea. You see, Hopper, nature has a certain order. The ants pick the food, the ants keep the food, and the grasshoppers leave. I know you're out there. I can feel you now. I know that you're afraid. You're afraid of us. You're afraid of change. I don't know the future. I didn't come here to tell you how this is going to end. I came here to tell you how it's going to begin. <laughs>